Hi, I'm Alex Foster and I'm a pediatrician at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio. Today I'm going to talk to you about a problem which is an old problem and a difficult one and that is childhood obesity. Unlike a lot of other talks you may have heard about childhood obesity, I'm less interested in trying to understand why children are obese and more interested in why some children are not obese. And to start off, let me introduce the idea of positive deviance. So the idea here is essentially that in any group, some people do better than others, and often without knowing it. And this is true in even the highest risk groups of any disease. So there are some people who, despite everything being stacked against them, have creatively come up with a way to do better than their peers. That's the basic idea of positive deviance. Here you can see the first positive deviant happily rolling a wheel up the hill as opposed to carrying it. This is a little bit different than the traditional approach to problem solving in medicine. Traditionally, we study the sick, we study the disease process, then we try and identify the risk factors, especially those risk factors that are modifiable or that we can do something about or, for example, that give a bad prognosis, a bad outcome and we try and then reduce those risk factors or, or their impact. And that's fine and it works fairly well for a lot of different disease models. Asthma is a good example, breast cancer is another, but it may not work all that well for obesity. And I'll get into a little bit as to why that is. So this is a boy, uh, he's five years old, we can call him George for this case, and you may not be able to tell exactly, but he's obese. Um, and unfortunately, the fact that he's obese at age five makes it much more likely that he's going to be an obese adolescent and much more likely that he's going to be an obese adult and have all the consequences for that, from that. So if we apply the traditional model of medicine, we try and study the disease process of obesity, identify risk factors, and then potentially modify those risk factors, let's see what happens. So let's look at the risk factors for obesity. This is a, actually a short list of what the risk factors for obesity are and some of their interactions. You can see that it's a fairly complex model. There is a lot going on that contributes to obesity. It's a fairly simple idea sort of in the abstract of uh, we think obesity is too much in, not enough out, too much food, not enough exercise. But when you look at it, it's a very complex mess. And this is both uh, impressive and staggering at the same time. The challenge is, what is a clinician, what is a nurse, what is a parent, what is a community supposed to do with this? And so we've seen that struggle over time in that we have multiple programs that basically try and tackle different parts of this, but have often struggled to demonstrate good outcomes that have a long-term effect. So that's why we're trying to apply the idea of positive deviance, which is a different approach to the same problem. So to contrast the two, in tra the traditional model, we study the sick. If in posi applying positive deviance, we study the well. In the traditional model, we identify risk factors for progressing in the disease or for getting the disease. In this case, we identify protective behaviors. Try to reduce fa risk factors or their impact on the patient in the traditional model. In this case, we, after identifying the behaviors, we try and spread the behaviors that have already been shown to work. And this is all, so this is very well and good, but does this have any basis? Could this possibly work? And so that's what I want to talk about next, is that this actually has worked um, in an interesting and different but related disease, and that is malnutrition. So in malnutrition, we also think of that as a sort of simple idea not enough in, in that case, usually, just eat more. Well, if you look at the model for malnutrition, similarly to obesity, it's a big mess. There's all sorts of contributors and risk factors for malnutrition. And groups for years struggled to tackle malnutrition in the developing world. There was a case, for example, in Vietnam, um, where they basically had program after program come in, in an area where six out of 10 children were malnourished never had very much success. So a group with Save the Children tried this positive deviance model. Essentially, they went into the group that had the highest risk factors for being malnourished, and they looked 
at the children who were not malnourished of those groups. They looked for the positive deviants and they tried to identify what they were doing. So what were they doing? In Viet rural Vietnam, there were some children who, being poor, having almost no resources, were still thriving. Those parents, parents of those children, were feeding them shrimp, snails, crabs, and the greens that they were able to find in the fields, which was not typical. This was not the traditional sort of rice and other traditional vegetables, but, the, but it was working. These children were thriving on this diet. They were positive deviants. The amazing thing about this was that after identifying these practices and spreading them through the rest of the community, they were able to show, they were able to reduce malnutrition in that community from six out of 10 children to two out of 10 children, and that success was maintained for three years, and then for the three years that they were there, and then it continued for five years after that, without them having to do anything. If we could say that for obesity, that would be remarkable, but no program to this point has been able to do that. So what if we think about South Texas and early childhood obesity? If you look at parts of South Texas, there are children with nearly every risk factor for early childhood obesity but not all of them are obese. There are positive deviants living in South Texas who have every risk factor, living in an environment with lots of fast food, having a lot of access to sugar-sweetened beverages, having, as uh, depicted by the traffic, basically, that was an attempt to depict uh, not much activity, not access to uh, pl safe play places, having too much screen time. There's children with all of these risk factors that are still thriving, and their parents have figured out how to make them a healthy weight and thrive. What we're doing is trying to identify these positive deviants, partner with them, and then spread their practices to create a sustainable model for effective obesity prevention and intervention in South Texas. Thank you.